we'd like to start by congratulating Coppin State on, on a great year and uh, his, a historic year for them. I thought they were, I was impressed with how hard they played defensively. And, um, you know, we knew they were a good serving team coming in, but um, I guess it's different to see it in person. I thought they put a lot of pressure on us and sort of receive. And um, on our side, you know, I think we were a little too high air, especially offensively to start the match. Um, and uh, what I liked, you know, I, is that we got better uh, throughout the match, both offensively and defensively. And I think by the third set, we were, um, it looked a little bit more like us. And um, I thought, uh, you know, I thought our both outsides were taking better swings at the end. And I think um, Emmy had one of her better defensive days in a while. I don't, I don't remember a ball hit her way that wasn't controlled. Um, and uh, happy to be uh, advancing uh, to the round of 32. What do you think attributed to the little, little bit of a slow start that you guys had? Uh, I mean, I, I think probably we were just a little jittery. You know, we there's a lot of a build up for this, and um, you know we're playing in a gym that we don't always play in, and uh, and I think we're probably pressing a little bit, just trying to do too much. Compensate to, a, to your, your lowest uh, hitting percentage of the season, though. What do you attribute to your team's great defense today? Well, um, Emmy was a big part of it. I thought we also blocked pretty well in zone four. Um, you know, I know that they're usually in a 6 2, and we're, this was a new lineup for them, so I think they were probably sorting some of that out. Um, but we, we felt like we had a defensive advantage going in, and um, so I think we showed that more as the match went on. Coach, how did y'all adjust to Coppins serve? Well, um, I, don't, I don't know if we ever totally did, uh, but I, I liked that we got better. Um, and, uh, you know, when we you know, play a serve that good, we got to just focus on passing a little bit further off the net. Emmy or Rachel, um, you know, when Tori blocked her sister's hit, uh, you guys all had a big reaction. You know, you don't often see sisters get to play against each other. What was that moment like for you guys as a team to kind of see that? Um, I think it was kind of like more of a like funny moment just like because that's not a typical matchup in a Division One college match. But um, I don't know if she was necessarily excited about playing her sister. So I think it was just like treating it like any other point for her. Just like, yeah, I, I got a block and just move on to this one point. Yeah. And fun fact, there's four people on our team that have siblings in the tournament. <laughs> uh, Emmy, so you started the game out hot and you stayed hot throughout the game. Would you say being a libero is like a momentum-based thing? Um, yeah, I would say um, if you start the match getting a lot of balls hit at you, it kind of um, puts you in this mindset of like, okay, like I'm – Everything's gonna be up, and like it starts with your your defensive intensity starts from the beginning. So I think, yeah, there's a lot of momentum that goes into being a libero. But I think that's also just the sport of volleyball. It's a big momentum sport. So, Rachel, when it came to a match like this where a team comes out and they had a four point lead early in the first set, and you know they're a team that's look very comfortable on a big stage when they've never been here. How did you guys want to adjust and just kind of put pressure on them to sustain that kind of momentum that they started with? Yeah, I mean, it all starts in the preparation, just like throughout the day, we need to do a better job of starting fast. So I think that it kind of just translated to the game. But then we flipped the switch somewhere in there. It took, it took longer than we wanted, but... Did they do anything that caught you by surprise? Um, not necessarily by surprise. I think that we just needed to treat it like a national championship, and we could have done a better job at that. Coach, um, Tori obviously had a pretty solid game, hit 550, a double-double for her. I mean, have you, how have you seen her perform so far in these past few matches that have shown her growth so far this season? She's She's been a more consistent performer, you know, at the end of the season than, um, you know, than the start. I, I think uh, she made some really good digs tonight, too, especially overhead that she just responded really quickly to. So I... I I actually didn't like a lot of her swings to start the match. I, the third set I did, but I, I was pretty impressed with her defense. Um, they were doing early in the game. They were doing 
the they floated the ball over your blockers and it was mm -hmm. kind of catching you guys off guard. How do you how did you adapt to that? Because as time went on, you obviously weren't letting it hit the floor as often. Yeah, I think we just got caught guessing a little bit and not just being low and reading the game and trusting our quickness. Rachel, there was multiple times where you'd set like multiple people like in a row and not just like the same person. Was there any emphasis on like spreading them all around today? Um, I think that like games like this, it's just a good opportunity to get every hitter in rhythm. So definitely trying to get every single hitter, like I said, like um, in a good flow of things. And then I re I like to repeat hitters sometimes, but just depends on the way the game's going. And then Dan, this is eight years in a row. You guys won in the first round. Six of them have been sweeps. What does being at home in this arena and getting a win to, to start the postseason run kind of do for you guys energy-wise now that you've been through it so many times? Yeah, it, it, it always it, it feels new every year in a way, and, and we obviously have um, some players that this is their actual first time. So going through it today, being at home, um, I think is going to just help us a lot tomorrow. Just knowing what to expect energy was. Speaking of first time players, we saw Blair Bayless get in for a little bit there, you know, two kills to end that set. Mm -hmm. um, did you bring her in just for a little bit of a change of pace? Like, is it kind of noticed you did that in Louis against Louisville too a couple weeks ago? Um, you know, she is uh, she's a player that's been battling on the outside all year and um, thought it was important for her as a freshman to get in and in case we might need her later on. Rachel, you get four blocks tonight. I mean, how, how are you feeling that? Part of your game goes part of the season. Good. I've been uh, working on it in practice because against Louisville, I was just sick of getting tooled down the line, so I just made sure that wouldn't happen. Here, Rachel, it felt like Valeria had a huge impact in the first set to really kind of like take back the lead after you guys were down. Is that fair to say? Did you see her energy um, like kind of take over as a leader in that moment? Yeah, I think Valeria is really good at like bringing a good vibe on the court, her experience just adds to it and she's a good at like defender attacker she's good all around yeah I would say just her presence on the court and the energy she brings is always um, a positive thing for our team so she's definitely a great leader for us so what y'all need to learn from this especially with USC looking y'all tomorrow night I mean the you know I think the biggest one is just to be ourselves from the start you know we don't want to um, lose points or a set for because we're not ready to go at the beginning. Um, but every, you know, that being said, I, I've done this long enough to know every match has a different energy and has its own story, and um, and so we'll we'll start preparing for a for a tough opponent. Hey Dan, I probably didn't get a chance to see obviously first, or I don't know, maybe maybe you did, but what is the early scout of what you're going to be facing the challenge you'll see tomorrow night? Um. It, yeah, we obviously, you know, have done some advanced scouting, so um, a big part of it will be, uh, you know, making sure that we can slow down Skylar Fields. She's one of the best attackers in the country. Um, but they have, uh, it's not just her, they have they have a lot of weapons, and and so, um, you know, we have a plan, but we, we still got a review tape from tonight. Uh, speaking of Skyler Fields, uh, Rachel and Emmy. Rachel, you'll be blocking her, and Emmy will be thinking against her. And uh, are you, does it excite you to go against someone who's like an All American like that, playing against them? I would say yes, for sure. I mean, just um, getting to watch their first set tonight and just throughout the week preparing, I think it's something I've been looking forward to for the week. So, agreed. And uh, yeah, I mean, we're competing against high-level athletes every day in our practice gym, but it'll be fun playing her for sure, and the whole team. Uh, Coach, talk about the unique dynamic of sisters playing off against each other. How, how, how did you approach this? You know, I didn't, I tried not to make too big of a deal of it. I know the, you know, the media was talking about it, and I kind of had this sense that they really didn't want to be playing against each other. Um, so I, I kind of let it go, and I just tried to remind her of her job. And um, but I think at some point in time, they'll look back and have have some good perspective on. Oh, that's a pretty pretty cool thing to to be playing your sister in the NC2A tournament.
Did you know her mom made uh, split shirts? I didn't know, I, I, but I had a feeling she would. <laughs> That's what that's. Yep. Any last questions for coach or student athletes? Thank you. Thanks, Thank guys. You. Thank you.